<laughs> okay, I'm, I'm warming up. Don't worry. Got it. All right. Okay. Hi, Angela. This is Will. As you know, I'm a junior at Brown University studying health and human biology. And I've been with WTL Health Clinic since 2019. And currently I serve as the Bonner Fellow there. And yeah, I mean, I've been with the clinic since the beginning. I know it's been really crazy with the pandemic in the last year. So I just kind of wanted to conversate with you, talk about how it's been for both of us and the future of the clinic. So with that said, I can pass it to you. Hi, so you've already mentioned my name, Angela. Um, we met at the clinic, WTL Health Clinic. I am the social worker for the clinic and I also do office related um, management stuff. Um, I have been with the clinic since late 2018 so we both roughly started around the same time um and the clinic had, was birthed maybe 2016 late early 2017 um so we can both basically say that we've been there since the beginning of the clinic and um have seen the groundwork go into it um like you mentioned with the pandemic and everything things have changed um so one thing i just wanted to ask you was um, a year ago when we found out about the pandemic and that everyone would finish the year remotely, do you remember what it felt like or what you were thinking at the time? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think it was um, just like a pure rush of so many mixed feelings. I, I think for me, um, obviously like I wanted to be at school with my friends doing all the things I was doing and of course participating in the clinic. But on the other hand, um, COVID was a merging disease. We didn't know much about it. So it was very scary. And um, I think I, I was, so Brown issued like the evacuation order. Yeah. And I, I was planning to evacuate probably like a few days after they issued it because mm -hmm. of the and getting everything ready and stuff like that. But I remember um, they announced near last minute that there was like a case of COVID on campus. And I remember everyone like freaking out and yeah. I was working too, so I just, um, I, I sped up my plans. I loaded everything in a U-Haul, hopped in, mm -hmm. and drove like 500 miles all the way home. Oh my goodness. So yeah, it was a rush, emotionally, physically, it was a lot. But yeah, I mean, the right side is I got to be back with my family and mm -hmm. we're all safe and yeah, it wasn't all bad, so. That's really cool. And how do you think it was like, cause you guys are, a lot of you guys are pre-med, so, you work with like infectious disease information and stuff. So hearing about something that was brand new while on campus, um, like were you intrigued about what COVID exactly was gonna be like, or it was just like, this is happening, you gotta get out of here. I don't wanna get, you know, yeah, sick. That, that is a great question. And it's really funny that you mentioned that because the semester right before COVID started, I was taking this class called like evolution and um, like epidemiology of infectious disease or something like that and basically for that class near the end we were learning about coronaviruses and i remember my professor making a point about how like most likely like the next pandemic is going to be something that's like respiratory it's going to be like a virus um possibly a coronavirus and like back then like it was um obviously it was like just very casual like classroom learning and i never would have realized that like in a few months from then like i would have been like living the situation that he was like talking about so, right. yeah, I mean, it's, but I feel like when you're actually in the moment, like when you're scared, like you're just kind of thinking about like, you know, like going home and like making sure everyone's safe and yeah, thinking about the technicalities, but yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's definitely, that's actually really cool that you talked about it, then there was reality mm -hmm. next. So um, Angela, I mean, like, uh, this is kind of a throwback question, but mm -hmm. you remember like how the clinic was established? Um, we've been doing up until the pandemic? Yeah, so the clinic was actually started in 2014, 2015. Um, and the really cool thing about the clinic was it was started through a ministry service. So when I say ministry, um, Akosia and a team of the board members had um, utilized the church as a space to get health information out with um, WTL Health Clinic and also about um, people with chronic diseases, chronic illness, chronic pain. Um, her initial introduction to the clinic, to the community was a diabetes and blood pressure clinic. So people came in, they checked their blood pressure, they checked their um, blood glucose level. And through that clinic, they were able to, I think back then we utilized some Brown volunteers to um, 
but it's educate people about, you know, blood pressure levels, a healthy way of living. And then after that, they had an exercise um, clinic. And so basically it was always WTL, but back then they did like different sessions. So one session would be about the flu vaccine and how to get it and where to get it and if they could provide it. The next session was about exercise. The next session was about um, chronic illnesses. And then finally they were able to secure a location, I wanna say early 2016. And with that, the clinic became a permanent community thing. So uh, a year or two later, me and you got involved with the clinic and we've watched how um, the clinic is still staying true to the mission of doing good and healing all. And um, when we say healing all, it's not just the idea of perfect health, but having people be educated in the community. Um, as you may be aware from just visiting the clinic, Pawtucket is a very diverse community, but unfortunately they have the barrier of um, not having enough health clinics available to them while having almost half the population of Providence. And um, you go to school in Providence, so you can see just from your little block of community there's a lot of people and there are people who are documented and then there are people who are undocumented. So the focus of WTL, especially being in Pawtucket, so knowing what the community needed, they were already aware beforehand that there's a bunch of people in our community who are not documented. They're now going to the doctor and it's not because they don't have the means to find a doctor, they're scared. So that was another part of WTL's um, introduction, creating a safe place in a health environment. Um, if you don't deal with the issue, then it'll be very easy for you to miss. Going to the doctor for an undocumented person is equivalent of going to immigration in their mind, because you don't know what's going to come up. You don't know what you signed. Um, you don't know where your name is going to go. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but going to a hospital Maybe um, you had a breathing issue during that visit. The next thing you know, you get something in the mail about asthma and ways to trigger off asthma attacks during certain seasons. Um, those are all things that would worry someone who's undocumented because how did you find out that I have asthma? Who gave you that information? So WTL was created with um, a goal of informing our community, not just Pawtucket, Central Falls and catchment areas as well, about chronic illness, how to stay healthy, but with the mission of really, really, really getting to undocumented persons. That's just, so I guess when you say how, how was the program created? Um, it was created through separate clinics that eventually formed into one clinic. And then um, the mission became through going, having those clinics and seeing the clients that came through. Um, there was a lot of people who weren't documented. So um, WTL realized early on, we got to really focus our mission, not just on the community at hand, but the extra vulnerable, which is the people that technically don't exist on paper, but they are in the community. Um, what has what has been the biggest challenge you faced in your work over the last year? And not just with WTL, but with schoolwork as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, first off, Angela, just going off of that, like, I think it's always inspiring every single time I hear about like the mission of WTL and all the work that we've been doing. And mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it just gives me so much motivation to continue the work. And I think that's a great segue into like answering your question, which is the yeah. fact that it's been so difficult to like continue the work that we've been doing at WTL and obviously in my school work too, but um, just honing in on the clinic. Yeah. I think that like, like we, we were on such a good role. In 2019, we we're actually um, licensed as the, uh, I think it was an ambulatory care organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, it was um, incredible. We were all super excited about like our future and like strategic planning, all of that stuff. And then the pandemic hit and it threw a giant yeah. wrench in all of our plans. So I, I think for me, um, obviously I was at home, but the difficulty was to continue the work that we're doing, mm -hmm. picking up the momentum and just staying involved as much as I could. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think like, so to give you some context, like, mm -hmm. Kuzi and I were talking and we basically had the Bonner Fellows and other Brown volunteers um, help somewhat in the clinic operations by doing, uh, by helping with the Beat COVID-19 initiative mm -hmm. in Pawtucket and Central Falls, which to give you some context is the kind of, the, the initiative kind of spawned by the Pawtucket and Central Falls um, municipal governments. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, combat COVID-19 to stop its infection uh, spread and also to educate the population about the disease and offer mm -hmm. resources and solutions for them. So yeah, as part of that work, I've tried my best to, you know, be involved by doing a lot of remote activities. Specifically, my team was focused on communications. Yep. So we we helped to kind of audit like their communications platforms. We okay. like revised their social media platforms, their website, and also like various posters and flyers that they were using to promote um, COVID-19 related initiatives. Yep. Yeah, we, we kind of took our experiences and expertise as um, people who've worked within like the public health space and with like the studies that we've learned to help improve these resources. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, overall, it's been pretty good. Um, this semester, we're doing more like direct communication with the community. So my team and I are like making direct calls to like childcare facilities, nursing mm -hmm. facilities, uh, telling them about the vaccine and how they're qualified to receive it. Yep. And we've also been like um, helping with scheduling and yeah, I mean, it's it's good. I feel like it's a good team environment and it really does feel like everyone is doing their part to contribute and to help out the pandemic. So yeah, it's been inspiring, difficult and rewarding at the same time. But Angela, I know that um, you've experienced the exact amount of like changes and hardships and all that stuff that has come along with the pandemic. So that said, like, how has WTL um, try to like grapple with all these changes and how have you also handled it personally? So WTL, um, since the pandemic hit, initially it was kind of like, what can we do to help? Not more so we have to shut down. So it was really, really cool to see that in the face of adversity, because we've been facing adversity in regards to opening up, finding physicians to volunteer and just um, getting permanent staff aside from the ones that are have been volunteering since the beginning. Um, WTL stepped up. We, I think that we've done a tremendous job and I'm not saying that because I'm part of the team. If I was looking from the outside and I would say, oh wow, they really didn't give up. And I say that we have done a tremendous job because we don't have a lot and we've managed to extend ourselves to many organizations. One being the mayor's office. And then now we're also doing the COVID rapid um, testing. And um, I think in a month or two, we're hoping to be a vaccination site. So we turned all those struggles and I kind of think it worked out in our favor because um, we were able to start doing things more remotely. And if you follow the work well, as you have already, because you've been part of it, a lot of our work, if you think about it, was happening remotely per se. Um, we were doing contacts by phone, contacts by email. We were sending out invites to the um, programs for the clinic by phone, by email, sometimes by hand. So it didn't change our outreach approaches per se. Now where the barriers may have come from was just being able to see people in person, going to sites to um, get better counseling on what we can do better as a community clinic, um, having people come see our clinic. That was like a huge thing for me because most of the time when we do in-person site interviews or in-person um, anything, I'm the person that goes to meet the person. Um, so it was weird. Now we're just doing it by email. I don't know how people look like. They don't know how our clinic looks like. Um, and I, I'm a strong believer in face-to-face -face interaction. Maybe it's the social worker in me, I don't know. I just feel like you can always just pick up different energy. So that was a challenge for me per se. And then also just now you have to constantly be on your phone because our phones and our laptops became our work. Um, now that we're doing the rapid testing for COVID, it's interesting because we are on site, but it's mostly out of the clinic. So we are working closely with Rhode Island Department of Health more than ever. Um, we worked with them closely before, but now we are site for them. We're recognized on their website. They're work recognized on our website. Um, we are a place that not only Pawtucket community members know about, but other cities know about. So it's weird because the pandemic pushed us to that exposure that we were hoping to have through our good deeds um, in other ways. And we end up doing a different good deed and getting a bunch of you know clientele through that or um, eyes on us per se. Um, as for me professionally, I've been working throughout the whole pandemic. I've never worked from home. So it was cool to say one of my jobs, I got to work from home. Um, but, and I think currently 
the challenges that we face with the clinic is just maintaining funding. Um, that's a huge thing. That was a thing even before the pandemic. But as you know, a lot of businesses are being closed and um, just finding different ways to support ourselves while supporting our community. Um, it's not a challenge. I want to change that word to a new way to look at things. Um, just because we always thought that we'd just be like a site open doing community work. But now we've had to like remix that, you know, we've had to also utilize the swearer participation differently. Um, of course, you're being a community practitioner with the swearer um, team before. Um, she has really hands on experience with both programs and she knows what's required to keep things running successfully. So I think um, watching her try to meet the demands too, and wishing I could help better, but um, not being able to sometimes just due to, you know, regulations, licensing and all that stuff has been a challenge, but um, it hasn't been a challenge that I'm not learning from. So I'm big on if you're going to have a challenge, you need to learn from it. Um, you can't just be struggling for no reason. So um, it's definitely interesting to see as things are going. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, starting a clinic during a pandemic is trial by fire, to say the least. But it's great that, you know, our team has really pushed through and we've actually overcome a lot of the challenges that we have been facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've come out stronger than we were before, so. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, the work that you guys are doing with the mayor's office in itself is a huge thing. Um, what that just represents to us is that you guys see the vision and you want to make it happen just as bad as we do. Um, it's just so different because COVID has hit people in so many different ways, um, not just health-wise, but financially. So we're, right now we're looking at COVID as it's happening, but next year we will be hopefully looking at COVID as a past thing, but that's when the real like challenge of day-to-day -day life happens. Um, right now there's a lot of assistance out there. It's not covering everything, but it's covering some things for people, but what the clinic and myself are anticipating is what happens when those funds run out? How do we help the community? Um, also, how do we help our staff? Reality is you guys are in school, you're doing a great job of maintaining your participation in the clinic and at school, I'm hoping, um, but things are gonna change. You know, they, they may go from a health need to a social economic need where how do we, utilize ourselves to help the community at large. But those are things that as it comes up, I'm pretty sure we'll find a way to make sure that we're useful in it. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like based on all the good work you've done so far and all the partnerships and collaborations and connections we've been making, mm -hmm. um, that could be something that we could leverage not only with like within like other organizations, within like mm -hmm. our with like governments and things like that, but yeah. also the community too. So yeah. Yeah, I, I think we've given ourselves more operational freedom to kind of move around and try to be creative with how we fix like and solve our problems. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean we've talked a little bit about like the the struggles that we face, the hardship, mm -hmm. but what win do you think you're most proud of? And you don't have to name one, but mm -hmm. what do you want to kind of just um, you know, take pride on in? I think I spoke like too early earlier, but I think the clinic just stepping up um, in regards to the clinic. Um, personally, staying sane. <laughs> That's just been the biggest win. Um, just staying sane and getting the work done. Um, there definitely were times where for the clinic and all of us professionally, educationally, we probably didn't know what was going to happen next and how we were going to make it happen. But I think that um, as a community, we, we've shown a lot of promise. And for places like Providence and Pawtucket, that's huge. Um, I've seen people advocate for the communities who may not understand what the vaccination is about because of a language barrier, which is huge if you really think about it. Because usually when a health crisis is happening, you don't hear people go, or there are people who speak Spanish, they can't understand this pamphlet, or there are people who speak um, Khmer, or there are people who are Vietnamese, there are people who are Ghanaian. We don't 
I don't remember ever being young and hearing that um, aspect of things. So it's been definitely interesting to see that as a community, we're being way more inclusive, maybe because of things that have also happened within the last year as well. Um, and I think another big win when I think of the clinic work is just that we've been able to keep afloat and um, not just with community interactions, but as a team, we've been able to take on more swearer center um, people. We've been able to maintain good team communication. Um, no one has left. That's a huge thing. I, it may not mean anything to you, but a lot of people had to leave their jobs because they just couldn't do it. Maybe it was daycare. Maybe just it just didn't make sense for them to stay at the job anymore. Never mind volunteering. So we really, um, for me, I think like if I ever doubted the strength of the clinic, COVID really reinforced that we're doing the work and we are all in it because when it started, none of us backed down. None of us like said, um, you know, COVID, <laughs> you know, I can't do that. But instead we just rose to um, the challenge. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about is like I mentioned before, what we're gonna do a year from now. I cannot even imagine um, how the clinic's gonna look. I physically cannot imagine because I have so many different views of how we can do things. And I'm also really confident that we will do it. So um, it's interesting. I'm excited to see that. Um, what about you? What are you excited about in regards to school, clinic, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so I think um, uh, uh, it's very similar to you in terms of the clinic where I'm mm -hmm. super excited for our future and just how we emerge from this pandemic as a stronger group and just a stronger team. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is just, uh, I don't know, just like growing the clinic yeah. more, like in terms of our relationships with people. So yeah. strengthening our connection with um, the Swear Center. Mm -hmm. and also just leveraging more students to kind of be a part of this mission and give them opportunities to get exposed to healthcare while also making a difference in the community. So, I mean, this is kind of like a shout out to anyone who is watching this video, but I mean, if you are interested in healthcare, you're interested in um, the work that we're doing at WTL, then always feel free to hit us up because I mean, we'd love your help. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of my own personal life though, I think just, mm -hmm. I mean, next year I'm gonna be a senior, which is crazy because mentally I'm still like a sophomore. <laughs> so I think like just, um, you know, like trying to get back as much as the college experience as I can, given the fact that, you know, there's a pandemic and so many plans got derailed. But also just uh, for me, it's um, kind of a transition in terms of my professional career where I'm kind of thinking about med school and um, just life beyond college. So yeah, that's gonna be very interesting. I'm probably gonna spend the summer studying the MCAT. So not really looking forward to that, but something that I'm excited to get over with. So that would be nice. But yeah, I mean, I'm just looking forward to hopefully a return to normalcy and continue the good work that we've been doing and yeah, just strengthening the clinic, strengthening our community. If there was one thing you could tell your March 2020 self, what would it be? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think I would just tell myself to hang in there because things will get better. And um, I think that's been something that I've been telling myself throughout the pandemic. And I mean, so far, it's kind of been true. So I think like, Back then, I mentioned this before, but I was really struggling with like how to continue the things I've been doing, um, not only academically, but also like extracurricular wise and, you know, in my personal life too. And I think like um, just throughout my year on the Beat COVID-19 initiative, I've sat in on like weekly meetings with um, community partners uh, as kind of a representative for WTL and also just, um, you know, sitting in with like uh, team like leaders and the municipal governments, people from the Rhode Island Department of Health. And I think like it was really fascinating to kind of watch like the whole like um, progression of the pandemic, how things got like very bad very quickly and then sort of leveled off and then got bad again. And now we've kind of entered hopefully a recovery stage, but just throughout the entire process, just seeing like the great teamwork that we've been doing and the great um, 
work that we've been doing to stop the pandemic and the fact that our efforts have actually had somewhat of a tangible like impact on people's lives and just um, improving the situation for everyone. So yeah, I think it's been really nice to kind of be a part of that progress and do good work for people in the community. But yeah, Angela, with that said, um, I mean, I know you already kind of mentioned this, but yeah, tell you where, we already kind of talked about what you're looking forward to, but mm -hmm. if you could go in the past, what would you tell your March 2020 self? Um, stay calm. That's it. Stay calm and stay calm. Um, I think there was just a brief moment for me that staying calm was just like, how do you do that? Because do you, I wanted to help, but then I also obviously needed to take care of myself as well. Um, and you also need to take care of your family for you. You obviously were on campus, but you mentioned, you know, getting in that U-Haul and going back home and that drive and doing it by yourself as well. That's like a huge thing. So if I could tell March, 2020, Angela, anything, stay calm and things are gonna work out. That's just that, um, like you said, we already talked about looking to the future and um, what we're planning. I know that you're gonna be doing the MCATs and studying and all that good stuff. Um, I think it's really great that we were able to have this conversation because although we have um, team meetings, we haven't been able to have a virtual meeting in a while. So this is kind of like my virtual meeting with the team member. And um, it's cool to just hear how you, felt during the pandemic um, and how you reacted to, you know, um, I think from what I can tell that you're really glad to be back on campus and to back to some form of normalcy for yourself. I know it's a long ways to go, um, but yeah, I just want to just thank you for having this conversation with me. It was pretty good. Uh, I feel like I haven't had this conversation with anyone yet since COVID happened. It's always been in like a group setting, like, how are you guys reacting to this? this um never just like how did you react and how is it going so did you have anything you wanted to add before we wrap up no i mean i think you capture it really well and the same here i feel like there's been so much that's happened that it's kind of nice to like just debrief and just kind of reflect and share experiences with people mm -hmm. especially like you someone i've been working very close with in the clinic yeah. so yeah it's been very nice but um i mean i think like this has also been like really energizing because I feel like we kind of are like capturing like the the in-person like WTL health like team. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's really exciting and yeah, I'm just looking forward to the future. But, yeah. Yeah. But thank you again for having this conversation and I hope you take care and hopefully we'll see each other in person soon. Yeah, definitely. That's so weird to say that we'll hopefully see each other in person so soon. But yeah, definitely.